In this video, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know about Databricks Genie. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can set Databricks Genie up step by step from scratch. Let's go. What is Databricks Genie? It's a conversational AI designed to help you get instant and accurate insights from your data. You're going to use natural language. You can just make simple queries. Genie is powered by generative AI and it understands your data's unique terminology. It's not a wrapper on top of an existing large language model. It's a custom model designed to understand and analyze data inside the Databricks environment. And it continuously learns and adapts and it provides more relevant responses as you instruct it better. This is a wonderful tool, one of the best tools that you can use in this AI hyped up world. I'm being honest here because you know my opinion on AI solutions, but this one actually delivers and serverless makes it pretty cheap. So if you want to track trends or analyze user behavior or make decisions, Genie helps you act fast and you don't even need to talk to a data analyst. You don't need to ask them if they can make time you know, to extract some insights from your data. You don't need to wait for your data teams to build you a nice dashboard when you just need a quick answer. You can just create a Genie space ask questions and get answers directly from your data. In simple words, Genie is acting like a data analyst. It's mainly a SQL writing AI. So each prompt runs SQL inside Databricks, brings back some results and then shows you those results and the code that it ran. It's as simple as that. Now, how can we set up Databricks Genie? I created a Databricks workspace, a storage account and an access connector for Azure Databricks. These are the three resources that you're going to need. In our Databricks workspace, we need to make sure that we enable Unity Catalog. Otherwise, we won't be able to use Genie. We're going to get a message like this. Please work with your workspace admin to enable Unity Catalog to use Genie. I have an older video in which I show you how you can enable Unity Catalog. So feel free to check that video out after this one. You're going to have to access your account here in the top or go to accounts.azuredatabricks.net. I'm logged in with my email address dan at decisionforest.com but you see when I click on manage account I get this error and this is super annoying as this email doesn't have tenant access for some reason. There are a lot of gotchas that you're going to encounter when setting things up for the first time so have patience because there's an answer for everything. I found this fix here so please pause the video and see the solution if you encounter the similar issue. But the gist of it is that you're going to need to use the hashex user that you can find in your Entra ID. So not the email address but the user principal name and you're going to need to log in with that. If you do that you're going to get access to your Databricks account and we'll be able to create a Metastore in the same region as your Databricks workspace and then you can enable Unity Catalog. I already enabled it and now you can go to workspaces and then back to your Databricks workspace where you're going to see your catalogs. Okay so we enabled Unity Catalog, the prerequisite to use Genie. Now we need to upload some data. For this demo I'm going to use a data set that's quite useful to me and pretty much anybody that wants to analyze the housing market in the UK. I'm going to use the land registry price paid data for last year. This is a free data set and I use it from time to time because I want to check on the market. Since we have this complete data set for all the properties sold in the UK last year, I think this is a great use case for a quick Genie demo. Of course the purpose is not to analyze the data in this video but if you set up Genie with me, you're going to be able to perform your own analysis afterwards and you can decide for yourself if the housing market is actually crashing or if it's ready for a boom. In the storage account I created a container so let's upload the price paid data for last year. Now in our Databricks workspace let's go to SQL warehouses and start our starter warehouse. Pro tip here, make sure that you choose 2xs because this size is the smallest and it's going to cost you less. I think the standard starter comes in at small but that's 12 dbus per hour while this one is actually 4 so for this demo choose the smallest. Now we can go to our SQL editor and create a catalog, a schema, a storage credential, an external location, a volume and the table that we're going to use for our genie space. These are the 6 things that we're going to need. I'm going to speed through here but feel free to pause the video for these SQL commands. Here's the schema last underscore year in our property to catalog. And now let's check the storage credentials. I already created a storage credential yesterday and we're going to use that to create the external location. So here's the command to create an external location using our storage credential. You're going to need to point it to the container where our data lives. 
Quick pause guys, if you're getting value out of this, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also connect with me on LinkedIn and let's stay in touch as I appreciate all of your support. Now we can go to our catalog and we can see our schema called last year. And as you can see, we don't have any data there yet. Let's go to external data and here we're gonna have two tabs, external locations and credentials. We can see our property data underscore location, external location that we just created. And we can create an external location from the GUI as well. We can also see the credentials here, just as we could see them in the SQL editor. When you create a storage credential, you need to provide the connector ID. Now, let me show you where you can find this connector ID. In the Azure portal, you can go to your access connector for Databricks and the connector ID is the resource ID that you can find here in the top right. Now, let's go back and create an external volume. We can see the external locations just as we could see them in the UI. We're gonna use this URL from the external location to create the actual volume. If we go to our catalogs, there's nothing under our schema. So we need to create an external volume to see that data in that container. Here's the command to create the volume and here we're gonna use the container that's backed by an external location. Now under catalog, we can refresh and under property two and under our last year schema, we can see the newly created volume, last year volume. And now we can see the CSV that we uploaded earlier. One more thing about the access connector for Databricks. In order for Databricks to actually see the data, you're gonna to need to give it access to your storage account. And you do that through the access connector. Otherwise you're gonna get errors like these. Access to the storage container is forbidden by Azure. Here I already gave it access previously, but if you didn't, you can go to your storage account to access control and then add role assignment. Then you need to give storage blob data owner permissions to the access connector. You select manage the identity and then choose the access connector for Databricks. Once you give this permission, Azure will allow Databricks to see that data. Here I have both contributor and owner, but initially with contributor, I still couldn't see it. And then I added the owner role and it immediately worked. Now in the UI, we can click on the CSV and we get a preview. This isn't a great preview, but still we get a sense of the data. In the top right corner here, we also have the option to upload to this volume. So you can upload files to the external location from here as well. But what we need to do now is to create a table from this CSV. And for that, we're gonna use the UI. It's super easy and we can click on these three dots and select create table. We now have a great way to create a table inside Databricks. We can choose the catalog as property two and the schema as last year. And here in advanced attributes, I'm going to uncheck first row contains the header. The data doesn't have a header in this case and we're gonna need to add the column names. I'm gonna get the column names from the explanations of the column headers in the price paid data. We have the transaction unique identifier, price, date of transfer, and all of these columns are explained as well. Now, in this create table pop-up, I'm gonna rename all these columns as per the information on the land registry website. And I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. We can see the column is a rescue data column and we can choose to not add it, but it's useful because the columns that don't match with the inferred schema are actually rescued instead of being dropped. Now we can go ahead and create the table. Your table PP underscore 2024 is being created. Now the table has been created and we get a nice AI generated description. The table contains data on property transactions from the previous year. It includes information such as transaction identifiers, prices, dates of transfer, property details, and geographical location. I like this and I'm gonna to choose to accept this. You can see that it inferred the data types as well and that's pretty nice. We also have this button on the top, explore data in natural language with Genie AI. I think we're ready now to create the Genie space. We have a create button on the right and here we have a bunch of options. We can choose create Genie space from here. We can add a title for this Genie space. Now I'm gonna name it property data last year. I think I already have another space called the same, but it won't really matter because it just adds an incremental number in parentheses if it's a duplicate. For the description, I'm going to copy everything from the land registry page as this describes everything in detail. And it includes the column descriptions as well. And I'm gonna show you exactly why I'm doing this because I really want to see if Genie uses this data as well. Next, we have the tables that Genie will use to answer our questions. And this is what we've done up until now. We made sure that we have the tables ready. 
And finally, we can add some sample questions that appear in the chat window as suggestions. These aren't really necessary, but can help your team with suggestions about what can they ask. Here I asked ChatGPT to create a set of sample questions for a Databricks Genie space from the full description. I chose what is price paid data and what transactions does it capture, what do the property type codes represent, and what do the record status markers A, C, and D indicate in the monthly file updates. Now we can go ahead and save this space. We can see that it created the Genie space property data last year one, as I had another space named the same way. And here on the left, we have multiple tabs. Instructions, we have general instructions. Add general instructions on how you want Genie to behave. We can ask it to act as anything that we want. And I'm sure that you're already familiar with this functionality when you're creating custom GPTs, for example, on ChatGPT. Then we have a data tab where we can see the tables and also a history tab with all of our queries. Now let's ask a question. And I'm gonna use one of the sample questions that I asked. What do the property type codes represent? The table doesn't contain descriptions for the property type codes. This information is not available in the provided database schema. So in order to help Genie here, we have to add a comment to each column in the table. I'm gonna add them one by one from the explanations on the land registry website. It's gonna take a while, so let's skip ahead. Now that I added all of them, I can go back to the Genie space and in the history tab, I can see all of the conversations. I can click on one and it will open on the side here. We can jump back into the conversation. I'm gonna ask the question again. What do the property type codes represent? And this time Genie can access the information in the comments. The description in the Genie space is solely for our understanding, but the comments in the table are used by Genie to make sense and determine the relevant context. Since we got this far, let's ask some questions. I'm not gonna go deep into it as I'd rather you do it for yourself and take your time to play around with the prompts. Also in a future video, I'm gonna dive deeper into best practices on how to define and curate the Genie space. Let me know down in the comments if you're interested in this. Also connect with me on LinkedIn and I'll do my best to help you out with any recommendations and any help that I can give. Let's run a simple query. Calculate the average price paid for a flat in London in December 2024. It's thinking, it's thinking. This analysis provides the average sale price of flats in London for transactions completed in December 2024. Great, we have an average price of 528,000. Now, let's see the code. Property type equals flat. Okay, looks all right. Now, compare that to the average sale price of detached houses in Milton Keynes. This analysis provides an average sale price of detached properties located in Milton Keynes based on completed transactions from the previous year. Okay, so it didn't really understand that I only wanted the transactions from December. I should have been more explicit. Now this Genie space needs further configuration with both instructions and example queries that Genie can learn from. We're gonna look into these in a future video, but I think now you're actually ready to set up your own Genie space and play around with the data set of your choice. Don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn and let me know down in the comments what's your opinion on Genie. Will it replace data analysts? Or will it make them even more important as now that we have Genie, they can finally focus on harder problems? What do you think? If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.